Uh, my name is Matthew Allen and uh, this show is called Meetings Along the Edge and it's a series of uh, kind of tonal paintings that come out of the monochrome tradition. So the work has an obvious base in Western modernism, uh, kind of coming out of abstract expressionism and then further along into post painterly abstraction. Um, and then moving even more contemporary to painters like Gunter Umberg and Kalaminis, uh, artists who have uh, quite a defined working practice, follow a project for quite a number of years and are into a process of refinement, um, issues of materiality, uh, and the subtleties of visual experience. It's actually a one-shot process, so my works start with a coloured ground, which in a sense acts as the light source for the painting, and then over that I apply uh, a translucent glaze coat of oil, um, which has covered the entire surface of the canvas, and then overnight that flows down. So in, in a sense the painting is painting itself overnight. So that flow is what creates a subtle tonal shift which then in turn creates a sense of depth and, and light rising out of the painting. So working in this way, it's almost that the painter is to the side of the picture and that the painting itself is an object with its own personality, its own presence. So there's not a huge evidence of my hand in the work. It's not kind of, you know, virtuoso brush marks or anything. Uh, what is making the image is the process of the paint acting as it will because of its nature being fluid and you know in the circumstance of gravity. When I look for a title you hope that it captures quite a few of the ideas that are floating around in your head. So Meetings Along the Edge obviously formally refers to that quite a number of these works are diptych panels. So you have a meeting between two canvases and also, uh, for the first time since I've been doing this technique, I have separated the picture plane into an area of flat, bold colour. And then that's meeting with a more nuanced kind of area. Um, so that was one of the things. Also, I'm very interested in what a viewer brings to the painting. So there's this idea of the, a meeting between the painter, uh, sorry, the viewer and the material object. And there's this kind of edge where what does the painting present and what does the viewer bring to it, which I'm also interested in. And another idea with the title was that it's kind of a throwaway line to uh, the ideas surrounding Northern Romanticism and this, this idea like the Caspar Friedrich, the, the person on the edge of the precipice and how that got translated into standing in front of you know, a field of colour via people like Rothko and Barnett Newman. So it's kind of just a historical aside, in a way. Are you looking positively towards them, back at them, or is it kind of like there in the rearview mirror? Yeah, less and less more positively towards people like Rothko, uh, or actually more the baggage that is with him now. His paintings are really well painted and structurally very interesting in terms of how they operate, how they handle pictorial space ideas of both landscape structure and portraiture structure in his works. But the, the kind of sublime things that have been attached to his work, not really into that. I'm more into, rather than going off somewhere to this mystical sublime, but rather being faced with an object and what are the material possibilities of the object. These kind of operate I like to think a tension between are they light-filled spaces or are they objects that give out light into their environment. Uh, so when I create them, I'm looking at suggestion of pictorial space uh, through just a very simple means of uh, opposing colours, um, but also that the materiality asserts itself so that then there's this kind of back and forth between surface and depth. I've kind of narrowed down three areas that I draw that I guess colour inspiration from and uh, one is obviously art history. I look at a lot of painting and, and try and understand painters that use a similar colour over and over again and what they're kind of going for. Um, and the, uh, another one is just being in the studio and playing with paint, seeing what happens. And then obviously um, the natural world, dusks and dawns, things like that. 
I believe that with work like this, fundamentally the experience is prior to language. Um, you know, it's like the Edward Hopper quote is, if I could say it in words, I wouldn't paint. So I'm after something here uh, that can't be vocalized. It's, a, it's another form of expression, non-linguistic. 